Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new to this channel in these videos, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. I've been away for uh, for a week and I didn't do a video last week, but I'm back now. Um, the currency pairs that I will be analyzing are in the description box below their time stamped as well as the chart analysis on trading view so let's get into this week's <clears throat> excuse me let's get into this week's um, analysis and what we do is we start off on you know fundamentals the heads up for uh, this week as the markets and price are usually driven by either fundamentals or sentiment and the uh, price isn't always reflected in value and value isn't always reflected on a price chart so what we're doing with supply and demand is looking for bargain areas to buy and uh, undervalued areas uh, depending on which currency you want to buy the quote or the base currency now um, in the week ahead, we've got the US will publish the jobs report alongside foreign trade, ISM, manufacturing, PMI and all home sales. So I'd probably say, uh, you know, um, jobs report is obviously um, the big one um, and that has a reflection on, you know, things like GDP. Um, elsewhere, the European Central Bank and the Reserve, um, Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of Canada will decide on monetary policy. So that's going to be another big one. Um, monetary policy basically is what they um, is going to be interest rates, inflation, whether they're hiking, holding or cutting, depending on what they see in the economy and inflation. Other important releases include UK services and construction PMIs, Eurozone and Japan. Eurozone, Japan and Australia GDP growth, again, very important. And China foreign trade inflation data and uh, Caxin, I think that's how you pronounce it, services, PMI. So uh, lots to look forward to, you know, in, uh, in this week. And let's see how the uh, releases of these fundamental um, macroeconomic um, data will affect you know price and value and if you want to understand more about fundamental analysis then i have a fundamental analysis trading course absolutely free link is in the description box below and that go over the uh fundamental and sentiment analysis so that's uh risk on and risk off when i talk about sentiment analysis right and uh, also i'll show you some other stuff in there which is uh very useful for things like news trading if you click on this uh fundamental analysis spreadsheet it will give you an overview of um, what I am and my opinion on, uh, you know, whether I'm bullish on the dollar, uh, neutral, slight bearish, bearish. And from here, you can kind of derive um, what pairs really you should be trading strength against weakness. If we go to the left, sorry, to the right, I don't know why it's not going there. Here we go. Here are my ratings, obviously bullish being um, a buy, bearish being a 100% sell, and uh, everything in between is just varying degrees of strength. This is where I get my analysis resource from, sentiment analysis, and the last time I updated it was today, the 3rd of March. So let's get into the chart analysis. And uh, we start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. So you can follow along on TradingView as well go to trading view and search Leon Rowe and uh, you'll get this analysis now the last time I dated these charts was the 26th of February um, uh, been a very busy week um, but now obviously we're going to be updating them from uh, from now on every week um, or bi-weekly or so so just follow along so from uh, the 23rd so 26th of February what we've had is a bit of a push-up from the uh, for the Dow Jones dollar index, which is just a measure of strength um, of the dollar against the major currency pairs like the euro, pound, and the yen. So um, we've basically pushed up, wait for prices maybe push down into this demand zone here, but we've come back up into this supply zone. As you can see, this week there has been a bit of strength in the uh, in the uh, in in the dollar. If we look at the charts, so what you're looking for is pretty much just um, bullish price action to confirm if you're entering on any type of dollar trades. We don't trade this uh, 
this currency pair we just look to see if prices are coinciding with supply or demand zones or if there's any general strength coming into the market uh, when it comes to the, the dollar index and dollar strength and then you would look to dollar pairs in order to uh, trade those pairs so looking at the uh, current price chart um, if you are looking to short the dollar and looking for dollar weakness on any currency pairs <clears throat> then we are obviously into this uh, supply zone so what you'd be looking for is some bearish price action um, here and then looking for uh, bearish price action on any of the dollar index crosses sorry dollar crosses and then if you're looking to be a buyer then you're going to be looking for one of two things you're looking for prices to either come all the way down to where this demand zone is before putting in some bullish price action or what you're looking for is bearish price action and bullish price action to, to create new highs and then you'd be waiting for prices to come back down into this area here as we know that higher highs and higher lows are the uh, best areas to look for you know long trades and they create demand zones higher highs and uh, lower highs and lower lows right and what we look at we're not looking at drop based rally rally based drop um, uh, and I explain if you were a bit confused about that in the beginner's guide to supply and demand so that's what we're looking at for this week if you're looking at buying the dollar you're pretty much waiting for a bit of a pullback new high pull back into that demand zone and then look to get long if you're looking for short trades now you're looking at this as just confluence and some bearish price action or for prices to come down here some dollar weakness in price and then look for buying opportunities so moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen this is what we saw uh, on the 26th of Feb and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the new bars and see what has happened and obviously we've had you know those uh, bullish days since the 26th of Feb three bullish days on the dollar index and you can see it's been reflected on the dollar yen we've had pretty much um, uh, risk has been uh, has been on um, well mainly on even though there are worries in the global economy with you know things like brexit and um, you know the the Chinese uh, and US uh, trade war but um, it seems like the market is reacting to really just uh, overall uh, dollar strength and um, I think last week the um, US GDP ended up um, being um, better than expected so this is obviously reflecting on the price chart all right so we've pretty much just cleared this supply zone here so if we go to the dollar yen this is what we see and what we're going to do is delete that and then what we're going to do also is just put put a demand zone right here as you made higher highs and higher lows so you can start to see where prices high low and then we make new highs to so this area if prices do come back down to this demand zone this is where we should be looking potentially for long trades if you're looking to buy the dollar if you are looking to sell the dollar your first real area is going to be actually up here or unless prices create lower highs and lower lows what I mean by that is you're going to see prices make bearish and a bullish and a potential bearish um, candlestick pattern and then you're looking for prices to come back up to this area here before looking at potential sells so um, those are your options for this week obviously you've got sure, some demand down here with some horizontal confluence as well um, if we're looking at any kind of uh, trend line and diagonal support let's see if we get any um, a little bit so again we could see prices come down into here now you can see and I'm going to adjust this as well On top of this demand zone you've got diagonal support and you've got horizontal support as well you've got resistance resistance so 
traders will be looking at this area here as a level to get long and you're at the uh, you're in an area of demand personally I would probably prefer price to come deeper down into this demand zone um, but that would be the first area to try to look for potential long trades if we get any kind of price action and risk is on so now moving on to the dollar swiss the dollar swiss this is what we had prices did come down into this demand zone here gave a bit of price action but ended up failing and coming down into this demand zone and uh and reacting here so if you were looking to buy the dollar right now, you're in a bit of no man's land. And let's go to the actual chart of the dollar Swiss. When I say no man's land, you're kind of in between this uh, this demand zone, or now what would be called supply, as we've made new lows. So that's your supply zone right there. So you're kind of in between here and obviously this area of demand. And if you're looking for obviously entries, um, I don't really enter too much on the daily time frame. Um, I will enter on an intraday. So looking at four hour time frame charts, what you might want to do is look for prices to come back down into this area of demand. If you're looking to buy the dollar before looking at any kind of long trades short trades at the moment probably looking maybe prices come slightly higher and then look for sell trades here and then you've got obviously your sell trade um, you know daily uh, supply zone here as well so at the moment those are your options for this week and again just to reiterate you have to believe that either the dollar is going to get weaker and the swiss franc is going to get stronger at a supply zone right from a fundamental or sentiment perspective or at a demand zone you have to believe that the us is going to get stronger and the swiss franc is going to get weaker right based off of interest rates inflation and gdp and the gdp cycle in this pair i'm looking to be a buyer um, so i'm looking for probably some sort of retest if I can get an entry as well um, and the lower the better for me um, again just uh, making sure that risk is on so next currency pair is going to be the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, we did have some news regarding GDP and the Canadian dollar um, you know was way below expectations um, in fact I think the month to month was 0 0.1 so you can see where prices did kind of touch this uh, demand zone and you had obviously a bit of a um, diagonal trend line support and you can see where prices now you know have uh, moved up from there now we're into this supply zone so supply wise I would say this is going to be your first area of supply now if you feel that you want to be short here again just look down into lower time frames and look for selling opportunities your next area to look to get short by the Canadian dollar um, would be here if not you're looking at all the way up here unless prices obviously create a supply zone if you've missed out on this uh, on this trade then I'd say let me add this demand zone right here what you're waiting for is a pullback into this area of demand there's clearly demand here in fact that would be what I would consider hidden demand right there but I'd do it from the low and then you're waiting for basically a pullback into this demand zone and before looking to get long unless we create higher highs and higher lows and then we would look for the uh, higher low in order to get long on this currency pair so then moving on to New Zealand dollar US dollar and what we've had is from last week prices come back up into the supply zone 
and we've again sold off here again um, correlating with US dollar strength so looking at the price chart your options for this week if you're looking to uh, buy the the US dollar I'd probably wait for prices to come up into a fresher area of supply before looking to get short the reason why is because this area really has been now touched once twice after you know the, the, the second time of touching the third time um, kind of diminishes um, the, the probability of a successful trade this is really where you know the highest probability trade was the first touch second touch you know is okay as well but once you start getting to the third and the fourth touches that's where I don't really want to be a uh, a buyer of the US dollar so I'm waiting for fresher areas of supply um, technically in fact we do have demand zone right here right there but what I'm going to do is within that demand zone is look for potential um, horizontal support and resistance you can kind of see it here where you have resistance support support bit of resistance resistance here and support right there so I would say if prices do come down into this 70 0 0.675 area and you do get some bullish price action if you want to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar then this would be probably the first opportunity to look to get long but again looking for shorts higher up here first long right here and again just look for maybe a bit more confluence if you're looking for a bit of more of a reversal maybe into this zone here but keep in mind that this demand zone around this six seven five six seven um zero point six seven round number has been touched once twice so this is going to be a third you know potential touch if you are in it you know maybe you want to look for you know uh, uh targets probably down into this fresher area of demand right as long as the us dollar you know continues to uh um be the best out of the uh the major currencies so moving on to pound dollar and pound dollar brexit sentiment we did have a bit of a push up and that was really due to um, Theresa May uh, potentially taking no deal off the table when it comes to MPs voting. So they would have, she was proposing that there was going to be either her deal or Remain, which is um, uh, regardless whether you're a, a Remain or a Brexiter, which is uh, really um, you know not not really carrying out the will of the people who did vote Brexit. But the markets like it because they like, you know, certainty. Yeah, they like the fact that the option of no deal and uncertainty um, is off the table. So that's what was pushing, you know, the the, the news of the British pound, you know, higher. Um, but again, we've kind of stalled here. Prices have stalled in this area. So uh, again, of this uh, of this supply zone. So uh, if you were looking to buy the US dollar then this would be you know this would have been a great area to look for short trades and let's go to the price charts yeah one sec delete that one so again zooming out this is more of a fresher area you can see we have from this higher area of supply this was a fresh area it hadn't been touched and then the first time really at this price level this 1.335 level um, and the 1.33 round number is where prices have really kind of touched you know for the first time in in ages since the 9th of July so prices are now reacting to here and again if we get some negative sentiment on the British pound and you know positive sentiment bullish on the dollar then this looks like a great trade to the downside lots of pips in this one if you haven't got in at the highs but what you're looking for probably maybe if you're looking to get in is maybe a bit of a pull back into this area before looking to get short or even just maybe to the underside 
you know of this supply zone before looking to get short um, if you're looking for long trades let's delete these buying the dollar then what you're looking for is that's an area of demand right there you also have some confluence where you've got a bit of support and resistance in that area as well so you've got support a bit of support resistance there 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 and then there again um, you've got one probably slightly higher as well around here probably immediately it's going to be around this area here um, I'll get rid of these two for now just so that doesn't look too cluttered on the price chart so these are going to be your areas to look for long trades so over the top higher end of this demand zone or the lower end of this demand zone or down into the 1.28 area but again you have to ask yourself why are you buying the British pound yeah, if it's a sentiment play, you you know, then uh, then brilliant. And when I say brilliant, I mean you know sentiment. If uh, you know there is uh, no deal taken off the table and there is just remain or Theresa May's vote, then you know the, the markets do like that. And if you know that is occurring as prices come down into this demand zone, then that is a decent buy. But overall, um, buying the British pound, the closer we get to you know uh, deadline day. And if obviously Brexit is extended, that would be good for the um, for the British pound. I think I say good for it, but I think the markets would definitely like an extension as well. Um, so now moving on to the euro dollar. Euro dollar. So what have we had? Euro dollar pretty much just kind of been in a bit of a range since uh, for the last you know three trading days. So again, we're in. Uh, in between this supply zone and really this demand zone right here let's go to the euro dollar you do have let me zoom in slightly yeah you do have a uh, another demand zone just right here on top of that so um, what you're looking for is pretty much uh, any kind of uh, move back into this area here this 1.131 1 level or 132 level before looking to potentially get long and if you are and it's buying the euro if you're looking to get short on this currency pair and buy the dollar which I am these are the areas that you'll be looking for now it's a decent area but the best area is going to be the fresh air area of supply which is going to be around here this is where um, it's going to be the best trade <coughs> obviously um, you know you can attempt to get short here depending on what is happening fundamentally and sentiment wise on the euro dollar but this is definitely going to be the uh, the trade and this is what I also call it a breakout CPR uh, zone as well right um which adds to the supply and demand equation if you want to know about cpr zones um i have a couple of uh, videos on my channel just uh, search um capture pain relief so i'll uh, draw that over as well draw that over as well so um again pretty much self expansion prices come up into this area here look for shorts down here then look for longs depending on your fundamental bias Next is the euro yen and the euro yen. Um, we did have again some risk on sentiment. Um, Japanese yen isn't doing too well fundamentally, and uh, we've just basically made higher highs, higher lows. So going to the euro yen. Let's delete that and start adding. <clears throat> some demand zones right here and right here as well so again if you're looking to potentially trade the trend to the upside these are the areas that you'll be looking for long trades if you're looking for potential 
short trades in fact I don't know why this isn't on here that should be supply right there supply yeah um, I'm not going to take this off for now because it hasn't quite cleared it <clears throat> so right now you could be looking at a sell trade down into this demand zone again just looking for intraday opportunities right yes it's gone above it but I'm going to keep it here just in case this could be a potential you know fake out right and if you start to see prices you know come back in to this area and then look for sell trades <clears throat> but I'll keep the supply zone on here on a daily time frame chart even though we have you know pierced it and closed um, candlestick closes above it doesn't mean that every candlestick close means that a level is gone because you have uh, such thing as stop hunting right so if you understand about stop hunting then um, <clears throat> you'll understand that we don't always uh, believe what we see uh, when it comes to price <clears throat> if you are looking at any kind of short trades this is where you'll be looking to potentially get short if not around here moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and I was waiting for prices really to come up into this supply zone really wanting to get in short on this currency pair but prices just didn't give me an entry and the prices have obviously sold off so where we are now on the Aussie dollar is looking at potential buy trades if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar going to be obviously into into this immediate area here if we're looking at sell trades you have got a bit of supply here so if prices do come back up here this would be the first opportunity is it the best opportunity um, in my opinion no um, unless prices really kind of make a, a move down right if I start to make a move down and break below you know these uh, this area here then I know this is confirming that this is a stronger area of supply and then I'll be waiting for prices to come back up into this area and look for some short trades if prices do start to reverse from here then I'll be looking for this area here as an area um, to look to get you know short um, long trades again we've got these areas of um, support and resistance or support in areas of demand which just adds to the supply and demand equation and we're looking at where other traders are potentially looking to add to their positions so um, these are the areas within this wide demand zone of where you may want to look for <coughs> long trades and finally we're going on to the Australian dollar Japanese yen and what we've had was from last week again prices came up into zoom in a little bit prices did come up into this area here before selling off again price came up into it again so this is the first touch second touch decent now when you can start getting to, to the third touch of levels this is where you want to kind of you know beware right of what it is you know that you're potentially buying so going on to the Aussie yen if you are looking to hit and if you are short right now you'd be looking to probably ride it down to this demand zone here um, if uh, you are looking to buy the Australian dollar then you'll be looking for prices to really kind of come down here because we are between at the moment this range high and this range low and the Aussie dollar is very susceptible to um, and it's uh, really a reflection of, of risk sentiment so if risk is off the Japanese yen will benefit risk is on the Australian dollar will benefit so um, I like to keep my eye on the Australian dollar Japanese yen even if I'm trading this currency pair to gauge risk from a currency perspective um, and if you are looking to you know buy the Japanese yen and this is the range you're buying at the high of the range you've got a decent you know um, move to the downside in order to you know make some pips but just make sure that obviously risk is going to be off right so risk is off the table risk on is when fundamentals are in play and the Australian dollar you'd be looking for pretty much um, let me draw uh, demand zone here as we have made 
higher highs and higher lows. All right, so this is where you'd be looking for any kind of uh, buying opportunity. And again, if that fails, then you'd be looking for buying opportunity in these in the 76, 74.5, and 71 areas. So with that being said, that brings us to the end of the uh, analysis for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just email me at info at trading180.com. Leave any comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and uh, check out the content on the YouTube channel and also at trading180.com. Um, have a great trading week and take care.